Let's get a big round of applause for the NTNS folks. Great to see you. We've only got an hour, so we're going to uh, we're going to bypass the career history and all that and get straight into the uh, the managers and some of the funny stories that the lads have got to share. And Lee, let's start with you at the far end. And Aussie our dealers, uh, a World Cup winner with Argentina. What was he like as a manager at Newcastle? He was there at a hard time. Yeah, he was there at a very hard time, Steve. Um, obviously, before Sir John Hall took over and the Magpie Group, so <laughs> not a lot of money about. Um, but a great guy. Uh, probably too too nice to be a manager. He didn't have to call him Gaffer or Boss, he just had to call him Aussie. Um, but just some of the things that he'd done, he was obviously a World Cup win, as you said. But his uh, journey wasn't great, to be honest. <laughs> we played one day at Barnsley and went up on the pitch and came in and he said, uh, well, uh, well, uh, obviously you could be pretty bad, and, uh, and I looked at him and he looked at me and he said, uh, well, it's a man of you don't fucking understand English. <laughs> uh, and like, you know, when the fans come to get their graph signed, there'd be some pictures of him there with the late great Diego Maradona and he shouted as well and said, Cloggy, I fucking made him. <laughs> he listened to me, so. Now, a great man, but unfortunately, uh, is it? At the time, he'd done great things with us youngsters, brought us through seven or eight of us, and went on to do big things later on for the club, but not a lot of money coming in. I'm not sure if a lot of people know, but he paid for David Kelly out of his own money, an interest free loan to the football club. That was repaid when once Sir John took over. So, uh, not many managers uh, would do that. They'd probably take a bung out of the players' salaries and be fair all the time with themselves. <laughs> But then, obviously, the explosion of the, the Keegan era and the entertainers. And uh, I class myself as a, as a lucky one. I was there from Kevin's first year to his last. I mean, there was five or six occasions where I nearly disappeared. <laughs> 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 it was a bad behaviour. But, I mean, because of the, the, the calibre of players, and it was a different world, the football world then. There was no transfer windows, you could buy players. Whenever you want it during the, uh, the season, me, you know, starting off the next thing would be survival relegation. Bez came in with five or six other players, and then later on that season, Rob Lee, the standard of the, the team was always improving. So, so local lads had to hang on their shirt tails and be as good as them to yeah. try and be a part of the group. It, it was a great era um, for me as a local lad, it was, you know. Not playing, just playing with great players, but getting great friendships with good lads like these. Um, not older lads, you can tell, you know, they're. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I went to the Barbas to Dave Cole, so it's not working then. <laughs> I went to uh, the Barbas and Dave got my career uh, uh, cut out soon. So, uh, so I, you I, I, just, I just took over the. They're still looking good, Nick. I just took over the. I put the weight on. <laughs> You've done as your dealers. Let's start with, with Kevin Keegan. With you, Bez. I mean, he brought in some wonderful foreign imports in his time. Tell us a little bit about David Ginola. You want to go? Oh, you yeah. Oh, the girls now. I've been boring the tits off my mind. I'm surprised we're still here. I know. I can't believe it. It's a weird one. I mean, Keegan was just special. Um, as I say, we've now we got promoted, and you always know we had special players, but you always wanted to get the next get to the next level. And then I just remember we heard on the grapevine we're going to sign someone by David Ginola. That was what it was. Look, even the girls are looking now, aren't they? She's interested in me now. Um, and he turned. I just all I remember were at Maiden Castle, and he turned up in his sort of black Range Rover, was all blackened out. We didn't know too much. You got to remember in them days, it weren't Sky Sports and everything plastered. And I just remember him turning up, and he got out. And his six foot two Adonis got out, and his hair's blowing in the wind. I'm like, what have we got here? And then his supermodel got out, missus, his missus. I'm like, fucking, have a look at this, lads. <laughs> 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 Anyhow, he comes wandering in. And he went, oh. I said, then he gets changed. All his hairs, all smooth and everything. His eyes are glistening. But as, as footballers, you know, I don't care whatever level you play at. I always remember it was kind of one of those plays where Keegan used to go, they'd always start with a small sided game. And Keegan would like throw the ball and go play. And I always remember one of the lads would always wrap it in at the, the new signing. 
So it, it'd bounce off, you know, and then you'd go, you know, test his character. Look, shit, how much we paid for him? You know, that guy. And I can't remember who it was. Somebody smashed it at him and he just jumped up and went, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wow. And I mean, it was, and I remember at the time he was gliding, you know, he was he left foot, right foot. And um, because he played the left hand side, me and Scott Sellers had got a great understanding, both Sheffield lads. And Scott Sellers turned to me, we were only, we, honestly, we'd only trained about 20 minutes, and Scott Sellers went, Well, I'm screwed, aren't I? <laughs> I mean, footballers know, footballers know when you see something. I mean, it was ridiculous, wasn't it? It was just frighteningly good. But I, it, it's just a little thing. I remember we coming after the training, there's a buzz around the place, you know, we've signed someone like, What a play. And then I was getting showered off, I was getting showered off, I, I happened to look over my shoulder and, um, and Janelle was there getting showered. Well, you know that saying, you can't have it all. Get off, make me smile. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, then we signed Les Ferdinand. <laughs> I'm still having therapy. <laughs> Just, uh, just the same story that I uh, for, uh, for me and um, Steve Watson, we were the first two lads who showed uh, David the uh, yeah the the the, the, big, the, the, the big ball game. Yeah, ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. We played Russian and Diamonds on your lads in a pre-season game, and then on the way back, he was like, "Oh, I'd like to sample and go for a few beers tomorrow." So we walked up, as usual with the first put my hand up and be there. The, the, the two our games and said, right, I'll pick you up. He was actually staying at the yard and came and picked him up and took him down the, the three mile there. It was about one, one, one third. And we got to about four o'clock and he said, right, okay, boys, I'm off back to the hotel for a steam and a spa and a sauna. And he said, no, no, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking out. out. <laughs> Get down the town with us. Two hours later, I'm in legend, slashing Budweiser. <laughs> 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 I remember mean, I did an article because we had, a, we had a, obviously it was pre season, and the next day we had a running session, and he was like struggling at the back. Not that he was like, you know, really always struggling, but we'd had a night on the drink, and there's me and Marco on the long distance run at the front. And I remember we'd done an article a few years ago and saying, I, when I first witnessed British football and the British mentality, I knew about my work ethic. And two young lads took us out on my first night out of the castle, but they were at the front of the run the next year as I was struggling. <laughs> but it was when he said he wanted a sauna, Steve, not possible. <laughs> I know one of the managers you want to talk about tonight, Rob, is uh, Rude Ullerton. Oh, yeah. He, <laughs> fucking, no, he knew a player, by the way. He fucking knew what he was doing. He was misunderstood, by the way. No, I didn't like him at all. <laughs> <laughs> what went wrong? He did. <laughs> <laughs> arrogant man, honestly, most arrogant man uh, I've ever met in my life. Uh, and I've met a few. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, really. I mean, for a couple of days, I got all okay with him, and then um, it just all went tits up from memory. He just never, never liked the way he trained. There's actually there's only, one, there's only one good story I like about Rude Bullock. We were playing, um, every now and again, he had the, he used to make a side, and he had the foreigners with the British, which was a huge mistake anyway, because you know, we had Duncan Ferguson, Shearer, Steve, myself, uh, with, um, Batty, and they had. Doma, <laughs> Goma, Doma, Roma. The Stoney who I liked because I thought he was a good He was shit. <laughs> uh, we used to, <laughs> I used to love him, he was a great yeah. He had heart of gold, yeah. <laughs> well, he never heart at all, did he? But, um, <laughs> and we had, this, we had this game, we used to put these foreigners for the, for the British, and uh, I remember it was, it was pissing down with rain. Uh, uh, at the training ground, and at half time, we're getting beaten. Would you believe we're getting beat by the foreigners? And Rude's jumping around. See, he never went anything, never went anything with the British, he said. And I remember piercing, Stuart Pierce coming up to me. As he's walking towards me, he's rolling his shorts up like that. He's like, big fuck off fires are coming out. And he said, he said, Rob, he said, next time you get the ball, it's a stick between me and that big. <laughs> so that's exactly what he said to me. That wasn't he didn't spell it out. But I don't think he could spell yes. <laughs> so, so I said, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm good at giving 50, 50, 60, 40, so 
Um, next time, Bob came to me, I just stuck it just a, just a little bit in front of Piercy, just in front of uh, Rude Pullet, and Piercy has gone for him and smashed him. I mean, smashed him. He's gone flying over, and his dreadlocks are everywhere. And he's landed in the mud, he's raining, and with me, the British are pissing themselves laughing. Even the foreigners are laughing. And I just remember him jumping up, thinking, who the fuck did that? He went, hi, Piercy. <laughs> <laughs> good tackle, he said. Lovely boy, good tackle. And I said, honestly, that's the uh, part that I, I fucking hated him for it. <laughs> Please mention Nate out. Um, Philippe Albert Best was a, was a character, another one of the foreign imports, but um, he, he, he was good with the chocolate planes, I hear. <sighs> this is a funny one, this. <laughs> Philippe Albert was probably one of the most gifted players I've ever played with, just a world class player. Uh, but he was, I remember, everybody used to say, you know, uh, Pavel Cernicek, you know, Pavel Cernicek was a Geordie, because yeah. he was just the loveliest, nicest guy ever. But, if there was ever a foreigner who wanted to be a Geordie, it was <laughs> Philippe Albert. Because, <laughs> like I said, Nash and Watto, and they, they would introduce him to the big market, and he just loved it. Absolutely <laughs> loved it. <laughs> but I remember, you got to remember, we, every journey on the coach, it's, it's a long journey, so they put videos on. And Watto, was the, he was the young guy, we'd bring magazines, music, anything to make the journey long. You know, like, not as last as long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I remember, I just remember getting on the bus and I said, what have you got for us today? And he went, Bez, you'll love this cartoon. I went, you what? I'm 20, 25. He went, no, 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 Bez, it's Viz. Right? I, I'm hoping some of you know what this is, right? I don't know what Viz is, right? So he went, no, so this. We put this video on, and it's a, a guy called Sid the Sexist, right? Great. Glad you know it, because this isn't going to work if you don't, right? <laughs> so, and I remember there was, there was a company on it as well, the big blind date. So it's, 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 <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> And this is why I remember. So this Sid's going, it's about having chat up lines. You'll love this, girls, honestly, brilliant. <laughs> you tried them on the morning. Yeah, you tried them on the Yeah, so, and it went, it was the lines where it went, can you drive back onto this? <laughs> right? So, I and, and then, then the other one was, do you like flowers? Put your tulips around it. Right? <laughs> and, and then we went in this car too. And then the, flat, and then the last one, it was, uh, it was a July jewelry. Suck me cock, it's a gem. <laughs> right? So, we're watching this on the video, and it's a car too. And, and, and and I can hear the Belgian at the back, he's going, rewind, once and again, he thinks it's absolutely hilarious. And I'm sure we play, it may have played Villa. And yeah. we win the game, so as you can guess, we get back on the bus, few drinks, a long journey back, and, and Philippe's there, ah, Sid, I want Sid on, I want fucking Sid on again, right? So we put it on again for a little bit, anyhow. What would happen then if we won the game, we're out. So we've got a Jewish nightclub, and you, you go out, so, in Julie's nightclub, we used to, if you go up the steps, or anybody remembers, we used to congregate on the left hand side. So I've gone to the bar, and I'm going to the bar, and I'm just getting a drink. And it's a oh, stunning, beautiful girl just pulls up at the side. But uh, just as I look like that, but before I can say anything, Philippe comes from the other side, right? And he, now, when Philippe talks, get this, he doesn't sound a little, he sounds exactly like the copper from a lower low. Anybody remember that? <laughs> He's got a weird French accent, right? Okay. So he comes in. <laughs> well, that might look like hell yeah. She turns, looks up. And he goes, uh, do you like, do you like a chocolate? And I thought, what the fuck's he on? Yeah. She goes, uh, pardon me, do you like a chocolate? She goes, yeah, he goes, uh, sit my cock, it's a nice bar. <laughs> what? He goes, he looks at me and he goes, I'm Sid. Well, no, you idiot. It has to be a fucking innuendo. It has to be a twist on words. And I just remember, we're all laughing out here. <laughs> and it's just like, hey, I just remember, I know, we're all laughing. The, the classic was, I remember on a Monday morning, like, and we used to go in and we'd go up to canteen and Keegan and Terry Mike would come in and go, lads, been out weekend, any stories we're having? Yeah, for fucking long. <laughs> Right. So you got to remember, Terry Mack and Keegan have been on the bus, so they've, they've, heard, the, they've heard the cartoon, anyhow, so, anyhow, I'm telling the story, anyhow. Keegan looks at his watch, he goes, come on, time, 10 o'clock, training. 
I remember as we cried out, as we were walking out, he went, hey! And the belt is just sat there, he went, ha ah, ah, ha ha, you said, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing of it is, he was the funniest, but the nicest guy you could ever wish to meet, but just the genius of a footballer. And that's why I say, you know, we, we do these things, and sometimes we tell the funny stories, but sometimes I was just saying, we forget. I mean, you always see it. Nash, Rob, I mean, the talent was just ridiculous. But we were just saying, like, God, we had some fun. Yeah. And, and do you know what? It was fun. It was just, it's that. And, I, and we would, Nash said something tonight, he just went, I wish the players could mix with you guys now, the modern day. Just go out, not, not a red rope and all that bollocks, you know, just, just <coughs> mix, because I think it, 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 it makes you mean it. That was the best thing that Lee Clark, Stevie Watson, Robbie Elliott, they brought that in, yeah. brought the fans into the change room, and that's what makes makes the difference. I think just where Ben was talking about the rest of Paddy and Philly and Tino, they, they bought into us as, as much as we bought into them. They were terrific players, but great lads, and they joined in what we were about. We were a great group, we had a great togetherness, on the pitch, what a brilliant togetherness off the pitch. We weren't prepared, we were prepared to fall out with each other on a match day, you know, the best of pals, but if it meant we had to fall out with each other at three o'clock or five o'clock on a Saturday to get the three points, because we're that desperate to win, we didn't, we didn't want that feeling of losing, which we didn't really do that often. But those those foreign lads that came in felt that we had a, we had a great camaraderie, didn't we? Oh. The even Tino with all that, he was crazy. But, I know that Philippe story quickly from me. He came in one day and I was, he came in the medical room. So there was two meeting points at the train ground either the medical room or upstairs in the canteen. So he came in and he says, uh, Nash, obviously my name, and he says, uh, How do I get to Evensburg? I said, Evensburg, where the fuck's that? <laughs> he says, In Scotland. I went, You mean Edinburgh? He went, Yes, you fucking Jordan thing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for the same one, but I'm just talking about the same one. <laughs> <laughs> and we had Tino, who was obviously crazy, what do you mean? We turned up on a Sunday, me, Stevie Watson, Robbie Elliott, and uh, Renny would be organising with other lads if they wanted to come out on a Sunday night as well. We turned up to Tino's house, and uh, his father would say, upstairs, Tino's still sleeping in his tweedy pie pyjamas. <laughs> But he was quite unique. He had a floor with a uh, ceiling fridge and his own suite full of Budweiser. So that was great. We used to just wait down and sit at the bottom of his bed until he woke up. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'd take him around and then start drinking his 100% proof Colombian tequila. <laughs> and whatever else come from Colombia. <laughs> and then I see him like he came out of international duty and a big cool in the back of his car. And I said, oh, now do you know what's happening there? And he says, I said, bad tackle? He says, no, man, Gun, gunshot wound. <laughs> I said, fuck it, gunshot wound. I said, you need to be careful. They'll get dropped from the international team. He went, actually, me and Pablo Escobar picked the national team. <laughs> <laughs> we, um, we broke the world transfer record, Rob, uh, by signing Alan Shearer. Um, you know, an amazing talent. Club's top goal scorer, uh, Premier League top goal scorer, but um, you became really close friends with, with Alan. Um, I think a lot of people in the room would be surprised to find out that, that Alan was a bit of a joker, you know, behind the scenes. And there's one story, we, we did a show last night together, you talk, told, which I'd never actually heard, about uh, a certain player called Des Hamilton. Des Hamilton, yeah, lovely guy. He was shit. <laughs> Okay, that doesn't say a lot of me, Kenny Dagg, he's saying it on a piece of paper. Yeah, Dalp Lee's was shit as well. Yeah. I like the last Kenny. He knew his players, Kenny. I like him. Yeah. Yeah. No, we, we, uh, we didn't, we signed Des Oman. I didn't know it was to play June Nash, but we did sign him. <laughs> a lovely lad, Lo lovely lad, but wasn't the greatest player in the world, let's be fair. And, um, a brilliant lad, and I remember him coming in, I was injured at the time, and now they were just going down for 15 million, he was the dog's bollocks sort of thing. I remember him coming in this new, brand new Gucci top, and it was like white, 
So blue bits around it and red bits. Look like an England kit, basically. But it must have cost 500 quid. Sorry, sales was. Well, I remember he walked in with his top. He's like that one, new top and Gucci top. So he's got his gear off, he's got out a train, and I'm on the treat table. And uh, I got his top, and I went to Des Albert and just signed. And I regret it, still regret it to this day. <laughs> no, it's fucking funny. <laughs> it was funny, yeah, it was funny. It's still quite funny. Uh, and I went to Des and said, oh, Des, can you sign his England top for us? <laughs> <laughs> So all the lads have got to do it. He says, yeah, no problem, yeah, that's on the side of the desk. <laughs> so I know. <laughs> so I went, I, I stuck it back on Alan's peg and I decided that. <laughs> I'm like, school kid now, waiting for Christmas, waiting for the company in life. I, I can't wait for the company to train. Because one thing Alan does, he loves his gear. He loves it. Uh, he's walked in, he's showered off, and he's singing away, and he's put his jeans on, but he's... Who the fuck is I done this? <laughs> and I'm like, hold on, I'm still the treatment tire, so I says, there's an one. And Alan, Alan's all like, and Alan's, it, it, his repercussions on people is, is he's got one thing. What he does, he used to cut, he used to cut your jeans all the way up, he used to cut your trainers, cut your shirt. That's all he, that's all he ever did. That was his repercussion on everybody. So I just remember, there's that one. Walking out, look, looking like Robinson Crusoe. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Dave, obviously he was in tears. I think it was his second day of training. Uh, yes, I still have nightmares about it. <laughs> that was that was one stitch up. And Bez, you've got a great story because you pulled off, I think, the ultimate on Alan. Tell us that story because it's a great one, and I think people here would love to I've hear. Got, it. I've got to kind of make it re really short though. It's a great it, it story. A it's a great story. The lads knew you were going to tell it. So go yeah, for it. Yeah. Right. Okay. So I said to Rob, it was uh, he'd, 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 he'd done his ankle. It was in it was in plaster, wasn't it? Yeah. So and because it was his birthday, Rob, me and him are chatting with him. You know, he's a big wind up merchant. We've got to stitch him up. We've got to find it. Then you're thinking, oh, get, you know, I'll get, you know, a stripper or something like that. And we went, no, 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 I'm finishing the page. I'm finishing the papers, got to do it properly. Anyhow, me and, me and Rob, between us, we came up with this fucking idea. We went, right, what we've got to do is let's see if we can take him to breaking point from a supporter. You know, like a supporter comes in and just be a, be a pain. So we've now booked to go, what was the, in, in the oh, restaurant in Durham? In Durham, anyhow. We're in a private, in this private room, and anyhow, so Al's there and everything else. I position myself so I'm next to him. What we've come up with is, I'm getting my sister and her best mate to come up to Durham. They're going to be in the restaurant, but we're going to get them to just be the pain in the arse supporters, right? And I've got it all written down, and I'm going to text them at every moment to come in, right? So we're all sat there. The first one's easy. They come in, and they do it nice. So my, my sister comes in. Oh, I'm ever so sorry, you know, sorry to bother you. Uh, you're, my, you're my favourite player, you know, can you, you know, can you have an autograph, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, that was great, signs it, go back out. So that's the intro. Anyhow, 15 minutes go by. I've text now, gone, yeah, now come back in. Next one is to come in, ask for a photo. Now, I was getting a bit, you, you've done the autograph, you know. But uh, what I've said is, when we go to have the photo, I've said, whoever had taken a photo, Put your arm around him, but I said to my sister, put your arm on his lap and with your little finger, flick his balls. <laughs> You've got to remember, his missus was sat there, right? Okay, right? We're all in couples, right? In that. So I said, just make it close enough that he's fucking uncomfortable, right? So I'm now watching, thinking this is great. My sister was brilliant. Yorkshire girl, she's an awesome like that. She's all right. She's all around right. 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 So he's, he's twitching a bit, but he's going, get on with photo, anyhow. They have the photo and they go out. And I can remember how I went, he went, Bez, did you see that? I went, what, what are you on about? I'm thinking he's, he's clocked it. And he went, he went. And then he left it. I went, all right. So anyway, meal's gone on. And then the next one is now to come in. And, and I know now he won't do it, which would say, would just be, she, my sister's now gonna come in and say, can't believe it, I'm, I'm, here, with, I'm here with Alan Shearer, we speak to my mom. Al's done his photo, he's done it. He ain't gonna speak. Right? But we're all shouting, speak to him, you miserable, get me not giving it all this and everything else. Now, the one thing that Alan does, he can't stand, is when people say to him, say, I pay your wages. Doesn't like it. Doesn't like it. And I always remember, he, I think he's anyway. So I said to him, that's the killer. We go, I pay your wages, right? <laughs> Fucking, you read it up. And everybody, I thought, yes, 
20 feet up. He went, get out. Get out now, right? And I'm looking at Lena and his, his missus and she's fucking pissing herself laughing and everything else. So I'm now escorting him out, right? So I'm escorting him out and he, he's, honestly, he's gone. So as I come back in, I'm going, oh, you fucking know, they've called the coppers. You're going to have to fucking explain that. He went, tell them to fuck off. I've done nothing wrong. So he's getting all wound up. My sister comes back in with a mate and we bought a plastic gotcha, haven't we? You know, like, like a finger. And he, and he looked at her, and my, my sister went, gotcha. And he, he, he I remember he turned, he turned to me, he went, you little wanker. <laughs> right? And the thing of it is, I remember I had, a, we were sponsored by Rovers, if you remember the time, I had one of them convertible MGFs. He fucking covered it in dung. He fucking <laughs> covered it, right? But it's one of them, it was like, but me and, me and Rob were just chuckling, because it was one of them where you got done, yeah? Because he always said, all them idiots getting done, you know what I mean? I'm <laughs> done it. Lee, not a Newcastle related story, but when you when you sign for Fulham, medicals, they're usually pretty boring. Tell, tell us what happened for you at, at Fulham. Um, interesting time, uh, signing for a club run by uh, Mohamed Al Fayed at the time. <clears throat> and uh, everything about it was just crazy in, in terms of, I went for my medical. Harrods had his, has its own hospital, so we done the medical on the top floor of Harrods. And it was the, uh, my final year of the medical was the famous day of the famous Harrods sale where you always got it, the A-list celebrity. And uh, <clears throat> so I'm, I'm doing my last little bits and pieces, standing on the scales in my birthday suit. And, uh, and he starts walking along and um, He's got this absolute stunning woman on the side of him. And I'm like, what is this? And I'm there, oh, yeah, I'm trying to get a bit of blood in it, so I look at him. And I'm like, what is this? So the wall of whips, the wall of whips, not there. <laughs> and I was like, get to do something, wow. And, uh, and, uh, and on this day for, for the famous Harrod Sale, he had there, Sophie Loren. <laughs> the world famous Sophie Loren. So, as he walked past the, um, is he, he just he just gave me the arse a bit of a slap, and it did ripple because it was quite a big arse even then. And uh, as he, I just heard him say, "Well, oh, that's one of the football I've just bought for the football team." I wrote and I'm thinking, "Fuck me, one of the most wood famous women in the world just seen for the lad from Walker, I'm all like naked. <laughs> <laughs> what's going on? Yeah, and, uh, yeah. The rest there was some other good times with him. It was uh, a strange time, but like an exciting time. You can put it a bit similar to, to what Sir John done with us and what this Saudi ownership group are doing now. In terms of he took the club and just took it from, you know, from even more because the DI signed for them five years earlier. They'd finished 91st out of 92 clubs. And then we went out to play in Europe and, you know, successful seasons in the Premier League. And it just, under this crazy guy, well, it was just, it was phenomenal. And, um, yeah, and I never thought when I was growing up at St. Anthony's Primary School that Sophie Loren would see us in the evening. It wasn't on the agenda. Uh, and my last story, obviously, I'm, I'm obviously the story through and through. And so I started watching the Castle in 98. It was my first team. We talked about that thing in January the year before. You know, I've asked you already, I want to come along because they were my heroes, that promotion team from then. Um, well, my first time was 1980, and if anyone remembers that team, Bill McGarry, manager, before all that cops took over, and we had two strikers called Bobby Shinton and Billy Rafferty. <laughs> they're not, they're not Rass got rolling off the tongue like Messi and the back of that's what they And uh, the way they played us, so when I was manager of Burnham, um, one of the few games I did win, I was giving it the big and so I went across to the boardroom and Started celebrating with some of the English directors, and this guy come up and he's like, Oh, Lee, good result, well played, the lads. And he's like, You, you know, played for Newcastle, you're a jury, yeah, jury through and through. And you know, he's like, Oh, when did you start to watch? I says, Oh, my first time was 1980. I says, uh, The front two were Bobby Shinton and Benny Rafferty. I says, They were fucking useless. And this guy leaned over and he said, Lee, nice to meet you. I'm Billy Rafferty. <laughs> So, and this is when 
fucking going to do with the tail and the TV and the dance. And they're probably making so Billy. <laughs> Paul Gascoigne, a legend at Newcastle um, in, in his early days. I mean, you've all got stories of some sort about Gaza. Let me start with you. Gaza, I mean, you know... Well, Paul was like someone, like when I came into the club as a schoolboy and then an apprentice, Paul was around as a first team player and, you know, everyone idolised him. You could tell then he was such a special player. And I'm totally convinced if he hadn't picked up that injury in the FA Cup final, we'd have to become the, the Ballon d'Or winner as it is now, the best in the world, so... But some of the crazy things that he done, I mean... Um, I went... So I was close with him. He, I mean, Paul had an unbelievable appetite for football, so he would train with the first team as a first team player at Benwell in the morning, but then wait till we would turn up after school at five, six o'clock to join in our training sessions, like, crazy things like this. Um, you know... He, me and Paul Stevenson, a pal of mine, a big pal of Paul's, we went, he asked us to go fishing down uh, down the time there, salmon fishing with him. We thought it was really funny that we were waiting um, on the train line, as the train was coming through, because his car was behind us, he would rev his car, try and push us on the train. Line <laughs> the just thought that was great. <laughs> Probably would have been killed if he had a hand on and died. He was giggling away at the back, didn't understand the consequences if he had a grudge on the train line while the, 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 the shutdown was down. Just thought that was brilliant. Um, <clears throat> you know, when I was playing with the New South Wembley before the England International, um, him, him offering to take that back to, to Newcastle because the last train from King's Cross then was like nine o'clock and him getting pulled on the central motorway we after he's. He's full international, coming back to Newcastle, getting the blue light in, blaming the in speeding on my dad, saying that it's lots of eight o'clock starting to tell us he needs to start work at six o'clock. He's fucking threatening us and everything. And the police are saying, oh, we'll, we'll give you a blue light whenever we've got to go up all and all that. Um, just a great, I, I'm, honestly, it's, uh, I think I always told him to love him. We love what he's about. I mean, Rob probably shared in England dress in London as well. And there's just many, many stories um, about him. It's just this, this, a great kid and hopefully he's, you know, getting better and getting back to back to his own yeah. stuff. I mean, some of the things, I mean, Carl Hayes really like the call at Fulham and he played with Paul at Lazio. He tells a great story that the great Dino's off as a manager and every day Dino's off would be collar and tie and suit small as a dog and we're going to an away game overnight starts of the day before <coughs> call uh Dino's office at the front beat the great Italian uh, broadsheet newspaper suit on looking immaculate and go into this tunnel in the darkness a couple of minutes come out the other end and sit next to Dino's off reading the, the big broadsheet does I ball up the egg It's like, he's going to be there forever. Especially, special person. I'm glad I think he's getting a little, been a lot better he than is, yeah. over the last few years, so we'll love to see him. Rob, um, you've got a good story about him and uh, Jimmy, Jimmy Five Bellies. Uh, there's, a, there's a few stories about Gaza. Um, again, it's, it's, all, it's all very similar to what. what, what um, what Cash was saying. He didn't tell us a good story uh, when, when he was at Spurs. He, when we, when we uh, so back in Newcastle, so it was when you were playing away games, you'd get the physio, if you lived near to where the ground was, you'd get the physio to drive your car. We used to go to Newcastle, you know, someone that would live down in London, the physio would drive our car down in London. And he used to tell a story, John Mulco used to tell a story um, when he was at Spurs. He did it to the physio, and he said he used to say, oh, you drive a car, you drive a car, you yeah, no problem. And as he sort of physio has gone out and the coach leaves a little bit later, he used to ring the police and say, my car's been stolen. <laughs> and as they're going up the M1, they can see the physio's been pulled over. <laughs> and Gaza's pissed himself, and he's been pulled over. He's a dick in it. So there's just so many stories about him. It's actually just a, it's just a great, great lad. I mean, to be around for a few hours is great. More than a few hours is fucking awful. <laughs> Speak, speaking of physios, Derek Wright. Oh, Derek, where is Derek Wright? Derek Wright's a legend. Um, 
But we used to play a lot of tricks on Derek, sort of thing. He was a bit of a bigger guy. Well, he was a fat bastard. Yeah. Uh, great, great fitter, brilliant guy as well. And I remember, um, I don't think you guys are there, but I remember we, we, uh, we played a pre-season game. And we had the idea that we were going to empty his physio bag and, and fill it full of pies. Uh, steak and kidney pies, chicken and ham pies. And there were all these pies that were stuck in his bag. And the idea was that when, when we played the game, it was like less perfect, so it's like less to go down a large can over the other side of the It was only a pretty silly game, so we thought it would be quite funny. Throw that in, but we thought it would be funny. So I remember playing the game, and Les, right on the other side, he's gone down, like, oh, an engine, Eric's fucking running on my own. So he's fucking back, really, his magic sponge. So he's got his. He's opened up his bag, and all these pies. <laughs> <laughs> that was the, the little story was the charity shield on it. When we got there, we had the suits, the clothes suits, and uh, well, the paper suits and all that. This charity shield again, the suits were better than the performance. <laughs> yeah. That's another thing. And Derek was obviously, as he said, a big guy, so he used to sweat a lot. And we uh, decided to take his shirt out of the packaging, and he sort of got it into a hotel room. And then uh, we'd think, oh, we'll do this with it. And we cut the arms off his shirt. <laughs> so yeah, he's put his, he's got his shirt on. He's obviously got his suit jacket on, he's tiny, you can see the sweat. <laughs> and I'm like, Derek, take your jacket off. It's like, it's July, and you know what you're doing? He's going, bastard. He's like, make sure he's took the arm off his jacket. He's like, free as a shirt, and I'm afraid for him to do it. He's like, fuck, I can't take it off. He's like, sweat as free as a shirt. Happy days, great, great to get out of Good crack. Gaza, um, any stories, best that you'd like to share? You, you, you know, you were lucky yeah. enough to, to get to meet him as well. I'll make it, yeah, sure, because, like I said, yeah, I was looking, I'm, I'm ridiculously patriotic. I, when I got me and Cole and Keegan just went, I was like, oh, fuck, you know, this is it, this is me, you know. Finally got to be where I wanted to be, and then uh, we were in the championship at that time, so it was like a big, big thing. So, but the, the lads all know, when you really get called up, you go down to a place called Bisham Abbey. Do the, you know, do your training and then move on. The thing was, it weren't uh, friendly, it was a World Cup qualifier to be played in Turkey, so I'll, I'll give you a short pick, just, just fucking Gaza. So, I, I turn up, and as you can guess, I, I walk into the hotel, and I'm the first one there, so I'm nervous, so I thought, what do I do? I thought, don't get a beer, get, get an orange juice, get some orange juice. But I'm looking through the window, and as I'm looking through the window, I'm thinking, fuck, I know that, that's awesome. So it's like Paul Merson, Ian Wright, Tony Adams, they all start coming in. Looking fucking up, and now you're getting butterflies now. Then Liverpool, I thought that, yeah. John Barnes, and then Jimmy Redknapp, McManaman, Fowler. <sighs> My arms are sweating now. And then I can say, then Gazza comes in, Chris Waddle. I think, fucking hell, I'm having a depth here. Then Carlton Palmer walked in, I thought I'll play a fucking hundred games. <laughs> Anyhow, that's another story. <laughs> but they all come in, they all know each other, they're all fucking high five and everything else. Now, I, I started my career at Man City, and the, the, the chairman became part of the FA. It doesn't matter if you don't know him, there's an old guy called Peter Swells, but he's, all you've got to know is he's got the fucking worst sweep over you've ever seen. He come try it over. So he remembers me, he comes over and he just goes, he goes, John, congratulations. Well done, son. And as he went like that, I saw Gaza fucking flick it off. Fucking <laughs> off. <laughs> Honestly, it's, it's my sense of humour. It's fucking hilarious, right? Okay. He's now trying to stick it down, and Gaza's going, that is not fucking staying off. He's, fucking, he's chasing him round, flicking it. Right. I'm just going to, so a lead on. So, we, we <laughs> Graham Taylor, God bless his soul, right? He, he, so we get over to Turkey. I know I'm not starting, I know we don't want a team thing, so we, we get over, we all go into his rooms, and Graham Taylor says, right, I'm telling you now, get ready, this is where we start to win the game. Fucking unbelievable, I thought, fucking this is good. So I'm thinking, as, the other thing about Gazza is, everyone's got a nickname, as you can, when I walk in the room, it's like, hi, ho, fucking yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Right, so, everyone's got a so, I go up to my room, come back down, I'm thinking I'll be the first one in this room. It's a tight room, it's all, the, all the seats are already set up. 
and there's a flip chart at, at the front. But I'm expecting, because I'm down early, I'm expecting I'll be the first one in. You've got Gaza and Ian Wright, fucking now you've got double trouble. Both from amendment, right? So, then to in front. So, as I walk in, Gaza turns around and goes, Hiya, Bez, did you get Snow White, kid? So I went down early, right? Fucking that. So, I come in and I sit down here. Everyone filters in, honestly, I've got to stand up for this, right? So, they all come in, it goes quiet. The great teller goes, right, you lot. Now, this is where it begins, this is where it starts. Get your head on it, ready to win the game. And he turned and he flipped the sheet over, there's a big knob. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you, I swear, right? Then to in the front. I know, I, I know it's pathetic, but it's fucking funny. I'm telling you, it is. I'm now gone. Fuck it, I'll give Greg great tell you too. Just fucking, he, flip, he flips the next shame over. And he, and he's like, near post corners and everything else. But he's raging. He's fucking raging. We, 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 cut, we cut the meeting quite short. And I'm going to fast forward everything. We get to the game and everything else. And this is where you go right through, and it's all other things happening. But we win the game 2 0, and uh, as I said, I, I got named subs, so I've put the English shirt on and everything else. Fucking hell, my warm ups were brilliant. How I never got on, I don't know. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Gaza scores with an ender. You were in the crowd, weren't you? We were in the 20 miles, yeah, and he was all fucking kicking off because he was another one. So, we all did the Yeah, no, no, we went down. So, we win the game 2 0. Come back in, and I, and I do it. I remember so Gaza goes off because he's got man in a match. He does the TV. By this time, I'm changed and I'm just sat there. And he comes in, that's like uh, Gaza is just sat there, still full kit, pads, boots, and that. And he's just sat there. I just went, oh, right, Gaz, Gaz. And I just sort of went, Gaz, fucking hell, mate. Genius. And he just laughed at me and went, <laughs> and that's when I knew it was mental. Uh, just in that moment there. And he is. But in a beautiful way. And the trouble is, we, we're telling stories about slightly off things because he does, his brain's going, it's going mental because he wants to, he gets bored really quickly. But he's one of the greatest players that's ever lived. And that's why sometimes we have to just add to it because honestly, he's the nicest kid ever. But I think sometimes he doesn't, because of the other side of it, he doesn't get recognised, which is honestly, genius. Yeah, great stuff. Got about 20 minutes left. I do think it would be, it would be right not to look at what's happened this season, lads. And, and Lee, it's been a, a fantastic season for Newcastle. I mean, last season, you know, managed to, to pull off the great escape. This season, cup final and finishing in the Champions League. I mean, it's, it's beyond expectations, but great season. The phenomenal turnaround when you think of um, the standard of football before Eddie came in and the way we approach games. Before the new ownership group came, you know, the fans had had 14 years of just negative stuff. The message from the top was to finish fourth bottom. A couple of times we weren't lucky enough to do that and drop back into the championship. But even still, then it was even whoever we were playing at St James's was to play in a defensive mindset. And he came in, made the right signings in his first window to keep the club in the Premier League, and then put us on, on the team in terms of playing aggressive front foot football and not fearing anyone and making St James as a focus but also doing really well away and there's so many people talk about our era and um, what's happening now the similarities are, are very much the same I see it in a different world football's a different world now in terms of when us lads talk about the camaraderie we had on and off the field you know footballers they don't live their life like that anymore in, in certain ways, but they have an unbelievable togetherness um, to get results. We're doing the way. The manager has embraced the, the football club. Obviously, when Kevin came, he was always a, a, already a hero because of what he'd done as a player in, in, in the early 80s. But uh, Eddie's come and done that. He's embraced what the fans are about. He's, he's, he's made that togetherness with the ownership group and the fans and the players really, really strong bottom. So now's the test in terms of, we didn't think we are going to be here, to be honest, let's be honest about it, in terms of where we are, it's so quickly. 
and uh, let's see what can happen in the summer. It's going to be a tough one because obviously when you're dealing in the elite level in the Champions League, you know, you have to have the players to be able to handle that. And I know they keep talking about doing this in a sustained way and they've done that already with the signings. But when you get to the elite level, it just has to be that, you know, that jump to the next level of players. And they were probably thinking in their, you know, projection of the club, this summer wouldn't have been dealing with that type of player where you're competing best teams in, in European football, they are probably dealing with the next level, but now we are there, we want, to, we want to do well. But I think you've got to give unbelievable credit to the manager, and I know quite well, going up against the manager, against them before, and uh, you know, seen him around the city. He's done an unbelievable job with it, it looks like a great group of lads, so we hope that can continue. That's been a big change as well for us since the new ownership have come in. They've embraced us back into the football club. We, that hadn't happened for those 14 years under the previous owner. And uh, hopefully that can bear fruit. Rob, which players have impressed you? And, and where do you think Newcastle need to strengthen for next season? Uh, Trippier has been amazing, I think. Um, We've got, some, we've got some very, very good players now. I mean, I've always been asked whenever we're going to do these over the years, the last 14 years. It's always the benchmark. Would any of these get in the entertainers team? And every year for the last 14 years, there's fucking no chance. <laughs> <laughs> this year, I, I think there's a few that are close, you know. I like the left back. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely replace our left back all day long. Um, <laughs> so, I, so that's the way I thought I'd judge the team now. The team is, is, is getting, we're getting players now that, that, you know, in a couple of years' time, that they'll be, you know, they'll probably be um, as good as the, the entertainers. Hopefully, if they, if they continue on the on the upward spiral, just be it'd just be interesting to see. My only reservation is can Eddie Howe bring in the top top players? Mm. You know, when Kevin Keegan was Nash says Kevin Keegan was Kevin Keegan. You know, he got me to sign by fucking lying to me and, <laughs> and telling me Miller's room was, uh, was thrown away from London and Newcastle, which I believe. Um, so it's wherever he can lie to these players to get up to come. Uh, but that would be my only reservation. Can Eddie Howe, he's done brilliant. I have, you know, the surprise at me how well he's done, but we're now talking about elite players. Can we get him to come to Newcastle? And um, Kevin Keegan was easy, it's, it's Kevin Keegan. Um, Eddie Howe's had a lot of swings come from Newcastle, so. Yeah, he's, uh, do you know what? Fantastic, is I was just listening to Nash and, and you know, and, and Rob and both, and you know, you know, elite, elite players, the Champions League. I thought he was fucking busy, he's had four goals. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still, I'm still, I'm still second eyes, goal scorer. It's tight, 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 no, 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 they're going, oh, Bez, put your boots on, you know, these shit and everything else. They don't ask me to put my boots on anymore because we've got a proper team. Yeah. And that's really the feel good factors, by. They've got a proper management. I think the owners know where they're going with it. Yes, you've got to be careful how much you spend because you don't want to be bringing a knobhead like Ronaldo in and cocking all of the, what you achieve. So you've got to get, and I don't think he does that. I think he'll, he'll, he'll embrace the camaraderie of the team with what they've got and add to it. Um, and I think he's going. I think he's going very much down the brick. I think getting Madison in, you know, I think it'd be a great signing. And I think that'll lift us up again. And I, as I said, the problem we've got, and it, and it, it's an unbelievable problem. We're about three years ahead of where we thought we were going to be. Yeah. We've overachieved this year, really have. And that's his problem. We're all getting carried away with it, and rightly so. So let's get carried away with it. If we come mid-table and have a fight, who gives a shit? Honestly, the shit that this club's gone through over the last years, who cares? So that's what happened. Yeah. Lee, are you going to say something about 
you can say something there. I thought you were going to chip in. I mean, the, no, own, no, just, the, the, own, the ownership, though, I mean, you know, they've come in and, you know, they've kept their promises. You know, that, that, that makes a big difference. But looking at the fans, let's talk a little bit about the supporters. You know, we've got 190 people in the room tonight, many of them Newcastle fans. War flags this season have been inspirational at times and you mentioned something right at the start there about Eddie Howe tapping into that support Mm -hmm. when you look at the managers over the years we haven't had a great deal of success Joe Harvey in the 50s 51, 52, 55 as a player and then subsequently as a manager 69, 74, 76 you know we've, we've, we've had managers who tapped into the fans Kevin did it so Eddie Howe's been quite clever hasn't he in, in that yes, respect the, the managers who've been successful at this club have used the biggest asset the club has and that's the fans mm. the, you know it's yeah. it's not easy yeah. it's not it's, 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 you don't understand what the club's about I mean those 14 years when there was no ambition and you were being told as a supporter that the club was going to finish fourth bottom they weren't interested in any of the cup competitions a couple of times they fell through the trap door but they still get full houses in St James's and that's what made us, the only thing that made us a big club during that period of time was our support. Mm-hmm. There was nothing else. You, you felt for the players. Because like I said, you know, when, when I, in the early 90s and the Aussie the Iran and Kevin came in, you become a better player when you play with better players. And that's what happened with, with, with me, with us. We, you know, the windows were different. There was no transfer windows. And Kevin was constantly bringing better players into the group all the time. They improved it. I felt sorry for those lads during the national year because when you're a proper footballer and you want to be dealing at the top end of the table, you want better players coming in your dressing room to make you better, to get the standards higher. Our training was like match day. We, like I said before, out with July, the training was ferocious because we all wanted to be in the start 11. We trained how the way we were playing and it makes you a better player yourself. So, and that's, I've, used to look at some of those lads when we were fighting relegation battles and thinking, they want help. They don't want to just be, oh, I'm getting picked every time because we, have, we haven't got the ability to go and get the players or the, the owner won't give, give us the finance to go and get the players. So now we've got that, um, there's, there's that opportunity where you've got to drive and strive to, to get better and better. And I think, you know, honestly, for me, now I'm back as I was in 1980, thankfully, Bobby Shin and Billy on my front too, but um, <laughs> I'm back as a fan, and I'm coming through the city centre before the game, getting to the ground really, the atmosphere is absolutely electric. Mm. Obviously when we played in the Tiena's era, we, you know, we were in the town before the game, sometimes when performances people probably thought I was, but <laughs> <laughs> it was like, uh, you know, so I'm not, I, I didn't get the chance to, to see that, but now I am as a fan. I'm going into the city centre, the bars, the restaurants before the game, everyone's going to smile on my face, on their face. It's electric, the atmosphere. You get to the stadium early, that, the, the war flags, you know, what they're doing, but that, that's one at the end of the season. And the East Stand there with all the players and the management. You know, it's fine thing, you know, the, the noise that's being created, so yeah. long may that continue. Because if, if it shows what happens when you've got a United club. As I just mentioned, it probably three years ahead of schedule. But because then that's been a big part of the togetherness of the whole group, the players, the owners and the team. And that's what can be achieved when you've got that. You see, it's like a 12th man, Rob, having that, having that support. You played in, that, atmosphere, in that, that atmosphere. Do you feel that as a player? And can certain players buckle under that kind of pressure? Yeah, definitely. Without a doubt, I mean, the uh, sort of class down battle. So there's no such way we trained, but so many players that I've under the training, you know. Steve Guppy, remember Steve Guppy? He had touched the ball for four weeks of training and he was in tears, I think. And Keith got rid of him after five weeks, so... Uh, but that was, what he, that was what he did, that's what the, uh, the management was. Uh, and I, and I, I think that's just right. I remember Kevin saying to me, I'm always going to keep bringing players, better and better players, and it's, it's, up, to you to, it's up to you to keep up. Um, if you don't keep up, you'll be gone. If you do, you'll be part of the team. And that's, uh, I was sort of like the, the better the player that came in, I was lucky enough to be, be able to keep up with most of the players. So. And uh, even when the shit ones come in, you catch up with those, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> he, he's had a go. He's had a go. 
He's had a go a couple of times, Bez, but I mean, Dan Byrne, just, just from a... Oh, don't even go Dan Byrne. No, 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 no. Dan, Dan, Dan Byrne's from Black. Dan, Dan, Dan Byrne never listens to fucking get us in the challenge team. <laughs> Bez fucking... Did he off two weeks ago? Did he? This is invented. But they put me next to him, and I thought, "Fuck it, I'm gonna put him right off." <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, I, 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 it was great to spend an evening with him. Yeah. And you know what? I learned more than anything. Yeah, what a fantastic player. If you'd have said to me at the beginning of the season, "Could he play left back?" I'd have gone, "Not for me." Mm. What he's what he's proved is just ridiculous. He has just been phenomenal. But then when I spoke to him, um, it was. It gave me the glimpse because it is a journey, and I, and I was saying to him, I know I know the game's changed, but he's he's pushing with certain players, Sean Longstaff as well, local lad. He's trying to get he's trying to get it across to the foreign lads like what we did, we, like like I said before, they're trying to get that camaraderie where, and that's where he's even not not only just ability, his presence is making a massive difference to Newcastle. And just speaking to him that, that day, you know, I could see how much he cared and how much he wanted it. And it was, yeah, it was a pleasure to see, you know, a, <laughs> it did piss me off because I thought, I said, I said, how old are you? And I'm thinking, I packed in just as you fucking bone. But, anyway, <laughs> but it's, it's weird, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, he's, he has just, he's gone on and just been absolutely special. And, it, and as I say, he's going to help, he's going to help the next generation of players that come in. Because I think he's the type of player who go, hang on a bit. I think he'll have that voice in the changing room. Because I think that's why Newcastle have been so ahead of the opposition this year. Don't get me wrong, Man City, Arsenal were unbelievable this year. But Man United and ourselves, but Liverpool are struggling this year. They're going to come flying back. Chelsea are going to come flying back. Spurs are going to get better. It's going to be really, really tough. But we've got a nucleus of a proper team fantastic team in, in fact a special team but you are going to need which Keegan used to always say to us you need a little diamond Peter Beardsley or your Ginola or a Tino or a Shearer just, just that little extra that makes a difference but so long as they've got the right mindset that they want to be part of something if somebody's coming in just to give it a big one then I think stay away Lee finishing off yeah go on round the door Greatest moment in a black and white shirt for you? Oh, wow. Um, so many. I mean, you never forget a day of you because I lived the dream, didn't I? As, as I said, when I was growing up and watching from the terraces, I never ever thought that it was possible for, for us to play for Newcastle. So, you know, I played down in Bristol, 17 years of age, getting my day of you then. Uh, the, the Lord will stay with us. Obviously, some of the, the great days, you know, we won the championship, um, you know, getting into the Champions League, playing in the UEFA Cup now, what's known as the Europa League, playing in Europe for this football club, constantly challenging to be the best club in the country. You know, I think <coughs> the lowest we finished under Kevin was sixth, and we walk up there with that. I think we had a third and two seconds as well. And so, yeah, just all those times that. It hit home the last couple of, couple of weeks ago when we met up. We had a, a reunion with the 92 93 team, and that was really special for someone like me because I got to see all the lads again, and it was, it was a really special moment because you remember how a long time ago we started something great, great era for this football club. And, uh, you know, for being part of that, as it was a lad who was born in the East End of the city, this was it's really special. So. I can't really put my finger on any one time. It's the whole the whole period was very special for me. Okay. Rob, same question. Yeah, again, it's very similar. I think you know, Keegan years, first five years under Keegan were, were unbelievable. Um, the fact that I scored at uh, Wembley and Ali Shearer has not yeah. scored at Wembley. So in my church, trying to pisses him off a lot. Um, <laughs> Regardless, he's got 260 odd goals, I think, but um, he still hasn't scored the same time club at Wembley, which, uh, which I did. So, um, uh, and the yeah, only Antwerp scoring, you know, three goals in, uh, in, in Antwerp, first game back in Europe for 29 years or whatever. 
awful cross from John Burris as the first one. <laughs> I just get me out of it, make it really good, get you an assist. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I listen, there's so, there so many five nil, being man like five nil. There, there was just so many Barcelona, there's just so many great things that, that, that I can you know, put my finger on. Uh, I had ten fantastic years here, really. Well, yeah. apart from eight, I'm not doing fucking really good. There is Same question to you, Matt. <coughs> I just, the just moments that'll stick with me, I, I, the noise at Barcelona, when that whistle went and we got 3-2, it'll, it'll live with me forever. It was just ridiculous. I've never heard noise like it. And that's what they, when I was talking to Dan Birdie when I was boring, I was boring him to death, but I just went, honestly, get ready. You're gonna have the greatest time of your life. And as I say, look, embrace it, because I'll tell you, it goes like that. Mm. But that, for me, that noise, that now can do. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's been an absolute pleasure sharing the stage with the MTLS. Put your hands together, John Beresford, Robin, Lee Clark. Yes, Bez. Yes, Nash.